Hello and thank you for joining us for Operation Smiles virtual premiere of Health That Lasts. My name is Roma Downey and I've been a proud Operation Smile ambassador for nearly 30 years. I'm joined by some of my fellow Smile ambassadors today to thank you for your continued generous support of Operation Smile. For nearly four decades, the work of Operation Smile has helped to transform countless lives and communities throughout the world. You see, Operation Smile exists so that no child or parent ever has to feel alone. They give families renewed hope through free cleft surgery and related support. They provide quality care for children around the world because they believe that every child deserves to get the same kind of care that you would want for your own child. The same kind of care that you would want for anyone that you love. I salute their dedication to health that lasts a lifetime. Their comprehensive services that offer children speech therapy, psychosocial care, dentistry, and more so that they can live happier and more fulfilling lives. Operation Smile works hand in glove with local health workers in their hospitals so they can build a better tomorrow for their communities on their own terms. This is why I continue to do all that I can to support their incredible mission and work around the world. Operation Smile give hope to children and their family. We should treat all children with the same love and care. One free operation can give the children courage to smile from the heart. Operation Smile is a smile for love to everyone around the world. For decades, Operation Smile co-founders Bill and Kathy McGee have inspired all of us to believe in the power of children to unite people. A child's energy, paired with the reality of economic and health disparities beyond their control, opens countless doors and motivates us to help even more people to provide a new, renewed opportunity for so many beautiful families around the world. Thank you for being treasured members of Operation Smile's global family. It's because of support like yours that we're able to do the work that you're about to see and impact the lives of patients that you're about to meet. Thank you again, and please enjoy the show. Nazipa was born with a cleft lip in a part of the world with little access to surgical care. Living with an unrepaired condition, even her own siblings didn't see her for who she was inside. Cesar's cleft condition was not only life-threatening for him, it also threatened his entire family's future. For Lexi, her classmates refused to hear her voice because of her cleft lip and cleft palate. These children are some of hundreds of thousands around the world without access to the safe surgery and medical care every child deserves. Care that does more than simply heal their cleft conditions, but can transform every aspect of their lives, their families, and the communities they call home. Operation Smile is committed to creating these transformations. Join us on a journey around the world to see lives transformed, futures brightened, and hope restored. It's a journey that might transform your life too. By anyone's standards, a life like Nazifa's would be hard. She was born with a cleft lip in a remote Ethiopian village where her condition was rarely seen. No one knew where or how to help her. The people in her community were afraid and could not look past Nazifa's lip to see the bright, happy child she was. A child with parents who loved her dearly, but who also worried for her future. Then they learned that Operation Smile was working in Ethiopia with volunteer doctors and nurses who wanted to give Nazifa the surgery for free. They left their village, hoping she would finally find the healing they had always dreamed about. When she first arrived and Operation Smile volunteers evaluated her health, 
they found that Nazifa couldn't undergo surgery because it wouldn't be safe. She received the treatment she needed, and a few days later, she was healthy enough for an operation. After living her whole life with a cleft lip, after surgery, Nazifa can't stop looking in the mirror. Nazifa's life has been one of hiding inside and not experiencing childhood or making friends. But now, eight years after surgery, everything in Nazifa's life has changed for the better. She is getting the education her parents never received, and Nazifa dreams of becoming a doctor so she can heal the lives of others. Every child like Nazifa deserves a life of health and dignity with a future full of potential. Transforming the lives of children like her and bringing hope to parents is why Operation Smile exists today. For nearly four decades, Operation Smile has provided hope and healing for children with cleft conditions, helping them to breathe, eat, and speak better and live lives with greater confidence. Since our very first mission in the Philippines, we have established a global footprint that's active in more than 30 countries where we work to provide comprehensive cleft care, including speech therapy, dentistry, and more. All of this is made possible by the help of thousands of skilled and compassionate medical volunteers from around the world Though our work spans four decades, there are still millions of people who are in dire need of healing and care. In fact, every three minutes, a child is born with a cleft condition. In countries like the United States, care for these conditions begins shortly after birth. But in the countries where we work, millions of children are waiting for surgery, and some will die. Those who do survive infancy grow up facing extreme challenges. Cleft conditions often carry severe social stigma. So children like Nazifa experience torment and bullying. They can also make it hard to eat or speak and can cause serious illness. But together, we can change this. Imagine knowing that you're helping create this kind of hope, joy, and health each and every month. That's what becoming a monthly donor to Operation Smile creates in the life of a child like Nazifa, in your life. By becoming an ongoing supporter, you become part of something bigger. You join a movement of compassionate people helping reach the day when every child with a cleft condition has access to safe surgery and medical care no matter where they live beyond surgery your monthly support will provide ongoing comprehensive care like speech therapy dentistry orthodontics psychosocial counseling and more to improve lives for the long term In parts of Honduras, there was little understanding of cleft conditions and even less knowledge of how to heal a child born with a cleft. 
when Don Alex's son Cesar was born with a cleft lip. His world fell apart, both emotionally and financially. Is he going to survive? How will I feed him? Where do I go? And who will help me? His glucose levels dropped because we could not feed him. He could barely move. A clinic in the nearest city told him it would cost $8,000 to provide a cleft surgery. Don Alex was faced with an impossible choice. Sell everything his family owned to pay for his son's surgery or watch his son die. Would I have to sell our house? It was my inheritance and it would hurt to let it go. I felt like I was on a dead end street. I didn't know what to do. That's when I heard about Operation Smile. Arriving at Operation Smile, we found the light we needed. We received the good news that they would help us, and it wouldn't cost anything. Little Cesar's free surgery not only transformed his young life, but it created hope that rippled through his family, his community, and his country. Because after seeing how cleft surgery dramatically changed the life of his son, Don Alex made a commitment to transform the world around him, setting out to find every child living with cleft in his home region in Honduras and personally bringing them to receive care. As long as I breathe, no one in Olancho will live with a cleft lip or cleft palate. Imagine having a newborn you can't feed, watching your child cry from hunger. Malnutrition remains one of the most significant obstacles to receiving care, especially for babies like Don Alex's son, Cesar. Without timely medical intervention, these children can become more susceptible to life-threatening infections and malnutrition. In fact, children born with CLEP conditions have nine times the risk of dying before their first birthday. Before a child receives surgery from Operation Smile, our pediatricians and nurses perform comprehensive health evaluations to identify both acute and chronic medical conditions, including malnutrition. If a child is underweight or too weak for surgery, our nutrition programs offer families ongoing educational support and monthly assessments to track the child's development until they can finally receive the surgery that will be the start of a brand new life. No parent should have to choose between keeping a roof over a child's head or giving them the medical care that they need to be healthy. Becoming a monthly Operation Smile supporter means ensuring that children like Cesa will get the life-changing surgery and follow-up care they need. It means living and acting on what is good and right, taking action to help those who need it, loving your neighbors, being grateful, and paying it forward. It means giving health and dignity to entire communities, offering patients access to free medical care to treat cleft conditions, including dentistry and speech therapy that brings communities health for a lifetime, not just one time. In rural parts of Ghana, cleft conditions still hold a strong stigma due to lack of cleft education. This is something Faustina lived with for 17 years. I can't go anywhere. I can't attend school. I just spend my days helping my mother at home. I have my family, my siblings and parents, but I have no friends and I'm sad. Then Faustina learned that Operation Smile was in Ghana, providing free cleft surgery, and she dared to hope again. I have been praying to get this surgery. With her father beside her, Faustina took a 15-hour, three-part journey by bus, hoping her prayers would finally be answered. 
when she arrived. There was pain as well as exhaustion in her eyes. But soon, she was ready for the surgery she had waited for for 17 years. One that would change her life in less than an hour. Now, years later, Faustina's life is transformed and her dream of becoming a seamstress is now in sight. Learning to be a seamstress makes me happy. To be honest, with my cleft, I never could have imagined this kind of future for myself. They may not know your name, but they will always remember your kindness. Surgery is the first and most important step in a long, care-driven process of repairing a child's cleft condition and ultimately transforming their life. It can immediately improve a child's ability to eat, breathe, and speak. And in the long term, healing a child's smile helps them pursue a brighter future. We at Operation Smile are dedicated to providing a child with health that lasts because we believe that it's the right thing to do. By staying committed and offering access to comprehensive care before surgery and beyond, we give children and families the tools, support, and confidence they need to thrive. Imagine giving new futures to a child like Faustina each and every month. That's what you can do as an Operation Smile monthly donor. By becoming an ongoing supporter, you become part of something bigger. You join a movement of compassionate people helping reach the day when every child with a cleft condition has access to free, safe surgery and medical care, no matter where they live. There are many risk factors that increase the odds of a child being born with a cleft condition. And once a child is born with a cleft, the odds stack up against them. While the exact causes remain unknown, things like genetics and family history, pre-existing medical conditions, poor nutrition, and exposure to harmful environmental substances can affect the healthy development of a baby and can contribute to causing cleft conditions. While in countries like the US, babies receive surgery within the first few months of their lives, in the places we work, there are millions of people who simply never have that chance. While the surgery we provide is transformational, it is just the beginning. With the support of people like you, Operation Smile does so much more. Ours is a story of comprehensive care, of providing the social and physical tools patients need to thrive and reach their full potential. A story of communities getting the resources and training they need to continue this legacy of healing within their own countries and on their own terms. Each day, we provide children with vital speech therapy, dental and orthodontic treatments, and we're transforming communities in the process by developing essential healthcare infrastructure and medical training so children can eat better, speak better, go to school without fear of bullying, and look forward to futures full of potential. Imagine the pain of not being able to feed your newborn. Luciana was born with a cleft lip and a cleft palate on a Friday. Her mother, Nori, didn't see the baby until a nurse brought Luciana to her the next day. She was wrapped up, and when she turned her, the nurse said, try to breastfeed her. I turned Luciana, and she yawned. The effect was very strong, and I started to cry. The nurse took Luciana away. I tried to breastfeed her, but it was hard. So I had to use a spoon. Thankfully, we healed Luciana's cleft lip and cleft palate before she became malnourished. But imagine never getting the surgery and living your entire life with a cleft like Andrea. 
The lines on Andrea's face tell incredible stories of her hard life, especially the smile lines. Andrea lived with a cleft lip that prevented her full smile for 38 years. Like many mothers, she lives for her children, but one of her sons was born with a cleft lip and didn't survive. That's a tragedy no mother should have to bear. When her younger brother, John Paul, brought Andrea on a 30-hour journey to Operation Smile in Peru, she wasn't thinking about herself because she now had yet another child with a cleft lip and getting him the surgery he needed was her only focus. Thanks to the support of people like you, we were able to give them both the surgery they needed and heal the smiles of both mother and child. For years, our mission at Operation Smile has gone beyond sending medical teams to countries to perform surgeries. We work hand in glove with local healthcare experts to develop and build medical infrastructure and provide local doctors, nurses, and social support staff with the resources and training they need to sustain the work long after a medical mission has ended. We're even contributing to genetic and environmental research around the world to help understand the causes of cleft conditions that could, one day, lead to prevention. And we know that we can't do this alone. That's why we grow communities' capacities to address cleft conditions for the long haul and on their own terms. In Rwanda, there are more than 12 million people, but only two plastic surgeons in the entire country. Operation Smile has partnered with local healthcare organizations to train surgeons in cleft healing surgeries. But there are still a lot of problems Rwandans face. Wounds, burns, clefts that don't get addressed because there just aren't enough physicians to be able to do those procedures on a regular basis. The normal Operation Smile mission, I think the major objective is providing free, safe surgeries to patients. But then what we're doing currently with the University of Rwanda, it's empowering Rwandan doctors so that our patients don't wait for doctors from elsewhere in the world to come and provide those surgeries. These people that Operation Smile is helping to train are the people who are going to go in all different parts of the country to at least curb down the backlog of patients waiting until we have a mission to have surgeries. Though we've done many missions over the years where we go for a short period of time and do a significant number of surgeries, we know that the best way to help is to provide sustainability and build local capacity. These children need comprehensive care. The patient needs follow-up, needs necessary surgical intervention, dental intervention, speech pathologist intervention, everything. So that is why uh, other than working as an isolated surgeon, it is always better to work in a team. It feels good to know that after the surgery, my son will be fine. Our patient's need for care doesn't stop when a medical mission ends. That's why we've established care centers in countries around the world that provide year-round solutions for those who require more complex treatment than a single mission can provide. At these centers and with partnering hospitals, patients can receive free services, including dentistry, orthodontics, speech therapy, nutritional counseling, psychosocial care, and cleft and orthognathic surgeries from our dedicated staff and volunteers. Working in partnership with local health systems, governments, and communities is a long-term mission to help every child get the surgery and help they need to thrive. This strategy is all about ensuring that patients can receive cleft care closer to their communities with the ultimate goal of eliminating the need for our organization to exist. We invite you to join this ongoing movement of transformation. You'll become part of something bigger, a compassionate and committed group of people like you who know that together, that we are transforming lives, families, communities, and ultimately the world.
In the deserts of Colombia, the dry, hot winds are balanced by blue skies and radiant sunshine. It's here that Lexi was born with a cleft lip and cleft palate in an impoverished village with no access to electricity or running water. She's the seventh of eight children raised by their single mother, Elba. Lexi's family is part of the Waiyu people, and the lack of both money and the remoteness of her home had kept surgery for her cleft lip and cleft palate out of reach. She loved school, but the other children bullied her for the way she looked and spoke. So she grew shy and seldom talked. I worried about what was going to happen to my daughter. Then they learned that every year, Operation Smile performs free cleft surgery and multidisciplinary care to children like Lexi. And every three months, our volunteer medical teams return to provide ongoing care to patients in this remote region. Lexi was showered with love from our caring volunteers as they prepared her for surgery that would transform her life. After healing her lip, Lexi is happier and more confident than ever. The following year, Lexi returned to get her cleft palate healed as well, which improved her speech. After surgery, our volunteer speech therapists worked with Lexi to help her find her voice. Today, she loves going out into the world with her mother and is thriving in school. With your help, we've built local capacity to provide surgery and dental care for thousands of children each year. We know that people in underserved communities are more than capable of revolutionizing the delivery of care and creating solutions to the problems we all face. We've helped it grow. We have seen the impact firsthand. We envision a future where we've delivered enough training and education and resources so that there is no longer a need for Operation Smile. But to get there, we need you. We need caring people like you who want to give every child, every adult, the chance to live with the health and dignity deserved by all. Thank you for watching. For children like Lexi, Cesar, Nazifa, and so many others, please join us on this life-changing journey. Your support will fuel our shared mission, further our shared compassion, and create more shared smiles that will not just change, but will transform our world. Thank you again for joining us for this special premiere of Operation Smile's newest video. I'm Carrie Gardner, Associate Editor and Writer here at Operation Smile, and I'm thrilled to be joined with our co-founders, Dr. Bill and Kathy McGee, for a special Q&A to close out the night. Uh, Bill and Kathy, as questions start rolling in, um, one of the most commonly asked questions that we receive from our social media audiences are, what are ways that someone can get involved with Operation Smile? Um, how can someone, you know, make the smallest difference in the life of a child? Well, actually, there are just so many different ways that people can get involved. And I just want to say, you don't have to be a, a nurse or a doctor to do this. You can just go to our, uh, make a small donation and go to operationsmile.org slash give and just make any kind of a donation. That actually feeds into the surgery of a child. Or you could start a small fun page. That's something you can do yourself or a club, a rotary club, different clubs make donations to us. Or if you're a student, you can actually start a, a small club at your school and make donations that way. In the world around us, which is 85% of this world, have no access to surgery or health care. Those are the children that we want you to talk about. I would say also, you know, words are one thing, but emotion is another. And there's so many videos on operationsmile.org. Take a good look at the videos and find one that really touches you because reason does lead to conclusions, but emotion leads to action. Take one of those videos, show it to your friend. Show it to your parents, show it to your class, show it to your workplace, show it to people that give them a chance to see the need that exists in our world. Because most people are, are oblivious. Most people don't realize how blessed we are living in the countries that we live in. So give it a whirl.
And I think that you'll see that there are so many people out there who are willing to help. Another commonly asked question is, what causes cleft conditions? And how is Operation Smile trying to deepen its understanding so that we may eventually prevent cleft conditions from happening in the first place? You know, when we first started Operation Smile as a plastic surgeon, I thought I really knew about clefts. Uh, you know, I thought, well, it's a genetic thing, and yeah, maybe it's associated with some nutrition, or maybe there's a whole slew of things we'll never know about. As time went on, we had the privilege of being united up with a lot of great educators and people who really understood research. University of Southern California uh, it's really started a program to start looking at all the research that's been done, and then started to do its own research. Today, Operation Smile has the largest collection of genetic specimens in the world of kids with clefts. And what we found is, is that there are a lot of variations of that. Yes, it has to do with nutrition. Yes, it has to do with the family history. But it has to do with a lot of other things like, do you cook in the house on a wood stove that doesn't vent well? Uh, do you have a history of illnesses within the family? Uh, do you have a wide variety of different conditions in the climate and the nutritional aspects and the food you eat? There's so many things that can potentially affect your genetic makeup. So what I would say is right now we're learning more and more and more about the genetic predispositions that exist. I, I even think there are environmental issues. If you're living in an area that's surrounded by you know, smoke, and uh, we know some of those areas in Nicaragua that really do affect these kids. They had larger clefts coming to us uh, for surgery. So, so many things, you're right, that connect with these children to cause this clefting. But it's a great opportunity that we have because almost all the studies that have been done in the past have been done in Europe and the United States. Now we're broadening out all those studies to be in Central, South America, Asia, Africa, Middle East. And so we're really starting to get a pretty broad picture of the things that could cause clefts. In the video that we just watched, we met Faustina, who lived with her cleft condition for 17 years. Why is it that sometimes the patients we meet are older when they finally arrive to our missions? How come they aren't receiving cleft surgery earlier in their lives? Well, some of the things we do know now that there are barriers, which we call to these families. Some people are making a dollar a day, two dollars a day. They can't even pay for their transport to get to us. And so what they do is try to hide themselves and they never get to taking care of themselves. And then when they hear about us, they might be 15 years old, 16 years old. And um, sometimes we think, wow, I know there's an instance in uh, Ghana we thought, wow, we took care of most of the children there. We had been going there for 10 years. And the executive director said, no, no, I will go find these children. And she took a van and she traveled all over Ghana. And guess what? 800 children came in with clefts from her investigation. So they're out there. There are these barriers that keep them from getting to us. And we're pushing hard to really reach those children Looks like we have a question coming in from Maria. She asked, what types of care are offered at care centers and why is this care so important to the child after surgery? Well, we you know, started to see that the care of a cleft child isn't just the initial surgery, uh, nor even just the secondary surgery. There's so many aspects of care that are really important. First and foremost is the nutrition is important. So it's really important that the families get nutritional help and understanding. Second of all, if you just take a look at it, what about the speech, speech therapy, which we take for granted here? Well, that's necessary, but what if there are no speech pathologists in the country? Well, maybe we can train people how to do that a little bit. What about dental? Dental is a huge aspect in the care of a child with a clap. Well, it's a huge aspect in anybody's care, but most of these people have no access whatsoever to dental care. Things like orthodontics, my God, I mean, that's way down the line in what they would ever dream about, but it's essentially good cleft care. And if you take a look at the psychology and the genetics and just every aspect of multidisciplinary care, that's where our centers develop because we train people in those centers. And we now have about 30 centers around the world. I'm so proud of our centers. Each of these countries really developed these centers knowing 
knowing each child had to have better care than just the surgery. So 33 centers, that's extraordinary for us now that these children are taken care of in the best way we would take care of our own child. And the centers become the hub for education for the next generation of people to be the caregivers. So we're sticking right with it and we're really working to help these kids. And we'll do anything that we can to spread this because there are 5 million kids who have never been treated and we've got to find some way to take care of them. Mm -hmm. I think this is the last question we have time for. It's from Janelle. In Operation Smiles, nearly 40 years of changing lives, can you both share with us a favorite memory or a moment? Well, I have a child I always think of, well, I have several, but there is one, we were one of the first Americans back in Vietnam, oh, almost 30 years ago. And oh my gosh, the poverty we saw was incredible. But, you know, we just plowed on, worked with the Vietnamese, got into the hospital and I was walking down one of the hallways and I saw this mom kind of motioning to me. Of course, I didn't speak Vietnamese, but you know, when a mom motions, you just go to her. And um, I sort of was aghast. She had a little seven day old sitting in the bed and she was trying to spoon feed this child with some liquids. And I was like, oh my gosh, that child is never gonna live. So I, I kind of just gave her a hug and went out to the team and the team was like, there is no way we can touch that child. And I'm like, well, but the child is gonna die. They said, all right, well, let, let everybody think about it and see what they could do. And actually the dentist, and this is why we're saying the dental care is so important, made an obturator, which is a little plate that goes at the roof of the mouth. And on a seven day old, he said, I, I'll do this, I'll do this. I said, all right. And sure enough, he made that uh, obturator and it was the very last thing we did on that mission. And the whole team gathered around this little baby and this mom. She was so happy that something could happen. And he puts the obturator in and that was it. That was the last we saw, the last we knew. And we were hoping that child could eat. And lo and behold, when we went back the next year, guess what? That fat little one-year-old was the first one on that line with that very <laughs> smiley mom. And I, I just want to say, um, John Moffat was the dentist at the time and he has passed away. So he's left a tremendous legacy of changing a child's life. So for me, that touches my heart all the time when I think of what one person can do to change the life of another. Uh, I would say that the thing that sticks in my memory, even though it was on the very, very first trip that we took, as much as anything, is as we went to leave, there was a, uh, a mom that came to us with a ripe basket of bananas cradled in her arms. Her daughter decided maybe eight years old big, big hole in her lip and in the roof of her mouth. Uh, and the mother said, you know, I just never had anything special that I could give to you except for this basket of bananas. But I wanted to make sure I gave you something for trying to take care of my daughter, even though we turned her daughter away. Her daughter was one of about 250 children that we had to turn away. And I think that that was powerful enough, but to have this mother want to give me a gift for doing nothing was mind boggling to me. And so as she went to give me this basket of bananas, all I could say was maybe next year, but there was no next year. The team that we were with wasn't planning on going back to that city in Naga City in the Philippines. And so this poor lady had tears coming down her cheeks. We had tears coming down our cheeks. And all we could say was maybe next year, but there was no next year. And I think it was at that moment that Operation Smile was really born because it just didn't seem right that something that we could fix in as little as 45 minutes, that that child would never have a normal chance at life. And I think that that was the moment that Operation Smile was born. And so today, over 300,000 children later, we still have those kind of challenges. We still see that need we still turn away, unfortunately, those children. But with your help, and with the help of so many wonderful people around the world and companies and organizations, I know we're gonna succeed. And 
I just can't say thank you enough to every one of you. Thank you, Bill and Kathy, for sharing those moments with us. And thank you, everyone on the line who joined us today. Please have a great evening.